In this video, we'll talk about products, so products of sets specifically. And the following definition might seem a little bit foreign if you're used to Cartesian products. So a Cartesian product of two sets, x and y, and as usual, it's this mathematical definition will consist of data satisfying certain conditions. So, consists of a set, first of all, U, together with two functions, pi x from U to x, and pi y from u to y, satisfying a so-called universal property. And the word universal will be explained uh, shortly. So, first notice that we have a set and we have two functions. And if I have another set, um, if for any other set, let's call it V, together with exactly these kinds of maps, pi, um, well let's not call it pi again, maybe I'll call it pi prime um, x from v to x and pi prime y from v to y, there exists a unique map function h from v to u such that the following diagram commutes. So here, let me draw this data here. We have u, we have x, we have y, and we have these maps. And we think of these as projection maps onto the two different factors. Um, and we also have V, and V comes equipped with maps to X and Y as well. Pi X prime, pi Y prime. And U is a Cartesian product if, for any such diagram like this, there exists a unique map which oftentimes we denote with a dashed arrow, h, such that this diagram commutes. And remember from last time what that means. That means that h composed with pi x equals pi x prime, i.e. pi x composed with h equals pi x prime, and that's one pair of paths in this diagram. There's another pair of paths on the other side. So that would say h composed with pi y is the same thing as pi y prime. And that's the definition of a product. And it seems a little bit strange um, with such a definition. And uh, we'll actually discuss how this is related to the usual notion of products when you look at pairs of entries 1 in x and 1 in y. So the reason this definition is presented this way is uh, the following. First, it avoids any particular, um, any particular sort of specific aspects to sets. I could replace these sets with anything really, vector spaces or whatever. Um, and, may, and this definition still makes sense, as long as I know what a map between vector spaces is. 
And two questions should immediately arise when you look at this definition. First, well, even, uh, even zeroth question, what do I mean by a Cartesian product? Shouldn't I say the Cartesian product? Um, but related to that, uh, one immediate question is, how do I know that such a product even exists? Um, whenever you make a mathematical definition, usually you have in mind a couple of examples, and um, hopefully your set of examples is non-empty, and it's not so large that uh, it encompasses everything else, every other set. So um, the first question is exactly, does such a thing exist? Second is, if such a thing exists, how many are there? Is there just one product? Is it okay to call it the Cartesian product? And in order to even make sense of that second question about uniqueness, what do I even mean by uniqueness? How many products can I have? And we'll address this issue in the next video.